we talked the other day <coughs> about a mind that's entirely free from all movement, from all, from all the things that thought has put there and all the th thought has brought about and has experienced in the past and the future and so on. But before we go into that, <coughs> I would like to ask, what is materialism? Materialism. Well, what is, man is caught in this materialistic attitude and values and yes. experiences. What is the nature of materialism? Well, I mean, considered, a, a, first of all, materialism is the name of a certain philosophical Philo point of view. I don't view. mean that. No. I don't mean that certain philosophical mm, well, sayings, uh, but the, I want to find... The belief that matter is all there is, you see, it <coughs> yes, isn't that... Yes, I want to go into that a little bit. Yeah. That is, all nature, all human beings react yes. physically. This reaction is sustained by thought. And thought is a material, material process. So reaction, as in, tree, in nature, in animals, in human beings, is the, resp the materialistic response. Well, I think, see, the word materialistic know, is not quite right there. No, that no. It's the response of matter, you see. But response the, of matter. Let's yeah. put it there. All right. Yeah. Response of matter. Right. That's better. Let me repeat it again. Let's mm -hmm. be clear. We are talking about having an empty mind. And we have come to that point when the wall has been broken down mm. and this emptiness and what lies beyond it or through it and so on. We'll come to that. But before I, we, come, we begin with that, I, as I said, is all reaction matter? Matter and movement, right? Matter and movement. Well, that's the suggestion that the... Uh uh, they, there, you could say that there's a lot of evidence in favor of that, that uh, science has found a tremendous number of reactions which are due to the nerves. And, yes, and, yes, all that. And, so, uh, would you call matter and movement is the reactions which, which exist in all organic matter? Yes, it's necessary. Uh, all matter, as we know it, uh, goes by the law of action and reaction. So That's every right. action has a corresponding reaction. Reaction. Right. So, uh, action, reaction, and reaction mm -hmm. is a material process. Yes. So, as thought is. Mm -hmm. Now, to go beyond it is the question. Yes. That's the point. Yes. Now, before we that, that, see, some people might say that it has no meaning to go beyond it. See, that would be the philosophy of materialism. That would, would be, be the belief that it has no meaning to go beyond that. Beyond it. Right. Quite right. But if I, if one is merely living in that area, it is very, very shallow. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It has really no meaning at all. But if one recognizes thought as a material process, and reaction and action is matter and movement. Yes, perhaps one should say one other thing, that some people have said matter is not merely action and reaction, but it may have a creative movement, uh, say that matter may create new forms. But matter may create new forms, but it's still within that area. Yes. Well, let's try to make it clear what is the difference. You see. So it becomes, we have to say, there are very subtle forms of materialism which might be difficult to uh, pin down. Yeah, would you, let's begin. Would you consider or agree or see that thought is a material process? 
Yes, though some people might argue that it is both material and something beyond material, you see. I, I know, I have discussed it, yeah. I know, but it is not. Yes, how, how can we say that simply to make because it clear? Because any movement of thought mm -hmm. is a material process, whether it is, whether it was searched beyond. Yeah, well, we have to make it clear so it's not a matter of authority, you know, to say that. Oh, no, of course not. Of course. As one observes, you're saying that from observation, one sees that thought is a material process. Now, how would one see that? I mean, I mean how would one would be aware of thought? Yeah. Aware that it's a material process. I think that's fairly clear. There is an experience, an incident mm -hmm. recorded, which becomes knowledge. From that knowledge, thought arises and action takes place. Yes. All right, so we say that thought is that and... Uh, any, any assertion that's beyond is still thought. Yes, it's still coming from the background. Background, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, any... Uh, so if we say that, that something new coming into there is not part of this process, is that what you're saying? Yes. yes. If there is to be something new, thought as a material process must stand. Mm. Obviously. Yes, and then it may take it up later. Right? Later, yes. We'll see what happens later. Yeah. So could we say all reaction and action, action from that reaction, is m movement of matter? Yes, very subtle movement of matter. Huh? Very subtle movement mm, of very matter. Very subtle movement of matter. So as long as my mi one's mind is within that area, it must be a movement of matter. Yes, well, let's proceed from there then. Huh? Wait, let's proceed from there. From there. So, is it possible to go uh, for m the mind to go beyond reaction? That's the next step, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we said yesterday morning in our discussion with the group, one gets irritated and the rea that's first reaction. Then the reaction to that, second reaction to mm -hmm. that, I must not. Then the third reaction I must control. Mm -hmm. or justify, or whatever it is. So, it's constantly action and reaction. Hmm? Can one see it's a movement, a continuous movement without an ending? Yes, although, you see, let me say what it looks like. <clears throat> the reaction actually is continuous. Yes. But it, it seems at a certain moment to have ended, and the next moment appears to be a new moment. You see, that but it's, still, it's still the same, but it presents itself of course as it different. Presents. That's right. That it's always the same, though it's... It's exactly always, the same, always. But, but it presents itself as always different, right? Of course, of course. Always but new, right? That's just it. Uh, you say something, I get irritated. Yeah. But that irritation is a reaction. Yes, it seems to be something suddenly new. Suddenly new, but it's not. It's not, but... How, but, but one has to see how do you, how does one, um, one has to be aware of that, you see. Of course, of course. But normally the mind, generally the mind tends to be not aware of it, right? But after discussing a great we're, deal and talking, you know, one can... We are attentive to it, right? Yeah, we're sensitive and alert to the yeah. question. So, there is an ending to reaction. If one is watchful, attentive, uh, understand, uh, not only logically, they, they have an insight into this mm -hmm. reacting process all the time, it can, of course, come to an end. That's why it's very important, I think, to understand this. Yes. Before we discuss wh what is an empty mind, if there is something beyond, or in that very empty mind, mm -hmm. there is some other quality. Yeah. So is that empty mind, a reaction. You follow, sir? Yeah. 
reaction to the, the problems of pain and pleasure and suffering, and reaction to that is to escape from all this into some state of nothingness. Mm. Yes, well, the mind can always do that. It can uh, become insane. <laughs> it can fail to notice pain and pleasure. Of course, and... of course. So it li- it, that becomes an illusion. Mm-hmm. Now, we are not talking, because we went into the question of illusions and said desire is the beginning of illusion. Yeah. Now, we have come to the point <coughs> that this quality of emptiness is not a reaction. That must be absolutely sure. Mm-hmm. Right, sir? Yes. Now, before we go further into it, is that possible to have a mind that is really completely empty of all the things that thought has put together? Yes, well, when thought ceases to react, I mean... That's it. Yes, now, the mind being material, the thought being a material process, so... On one hand, you could say perhaps the reaction is due to the nature of matter, which is continually reacting and moving. But then, how does does matter? Is it affected? Is matter affected by that this insight? I don't. Well, I don't quite follow. You see, ah, I understand. Does 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 insight mm-hmm. affect this? the cells of the brain which contain the memories. Yes, the memories are continually reacting, reacting. moving, yes. just as every, the air and the water, uh, everything of around course. us. And, of course. Uh, now, uh, if nothing happened, we should say, why would that ever stop? <laughs> <laughs> Quite. <laughs> After all, sir, if I, physically, if I don't react, I'm paralyzed. Yeah. One is paralyzed. But... To be reacting continuously is also a form of paralysis. Yes, well, the wrong kind of reaction. Yeah. The reaction around the psychological, psychological. structure. Psychological. We're talking of the psychological, yeah. always. So, uh, but now, assuming that the reaction around the psychological structure has begun in mankind, you know, why should it ever stop? You see, because one reaction makes another, another. So it's you would like expect, a chain. You would expect chain. it to go on forever unless yes. something will stop it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing will stop it. <coughs> right. Only the insight into the nature of reaction ends, ends rea- psychological reaction. Yes, but then you're saying that matter is affected by, by, what is beyond, by insight, which is beyond That's matter, right? right? beyond matter. That's what we... Do you remember yeah. we discussed this matter also mm-hmm. in Oha? Yes. So, is this emptiness within the brain itself or something thought has conceived as being empty. Mm-hmm. I must, one must be very clear yeah. on this. Well, at first thought, you know, whatever is discussed, you know, no matter what the question is, the thought begins to want to do something about yeah. it because thought feels that it can always make a contribution. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and uh, it might be useful, right? So thought in the past did not understand that there are areas where it can, has no useful uh, contribution to make. And so, but it keeps on in the habit of trying to saying emptiness is very good. <laughs> Therefore, thought says, "I will." Uh, of course, of course. Try to do some, to help bring about the emptiness. As thought is trying to be helpful, right? No, but we have been through all that. Yeah. We have seen the nature of thought. How, what is its movement, time, mm-hmm. and all that. We've been through all that. I want to find, I've come, I've come to a point when is this emptiness within the mind itself or beyond it? I don't well, think yes, so that's, What do you mean by the mind, you see? Because the mind being the whole, uh, the mid. <coughs> Emotions, thought, consciousness, 
the brain, the whole, the yeah. whole of that is the yeah. mind. And the mind has been used in many ways, that word. So yes. Now you are using it in a certain way, which is that it, it represents thought, feeling, desire, and the will, whole, and the, the whole, whole material process. Yes, whole material process. Which people have called non-material. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. <laughs> I call it the, the mind is the whole material process. Yes, which is going on in the brain and the nerves. Nerves, the whole of it, yes. the whole structure. Now, one can see this reaction, materialistic reaction can end. And the next question I'm asking is, is that emptiness within or without? I, without in the sense, it's elsewhere. Where would it be? Then? I don't think it would be elsewhere, but I'm just putting it. Oh. <laughs> I'm just... Well, yeah. any such thing as part of the material process. See, here and there are distinctions made within the material Limited. process. That's right. That's why I wanted to get at. Mm -hmm. It is there. It is in the mind itself, not outside mm -hmm. it. Right? Yeah. Now, what is the next step? Is that emptiness... I mean, does that emptiness contain nothing? Not a thing? Yes, well, not a thing. Or thing meaning anything which has uh, form and structure, stability. Structure, right? that's right. Form, structure, reaction, actually. Yeah. It's stability and reaction. Right? Yes. Form, structure, capacity, mm -hmm. reaction, all that. All, it, it contains none of that. Right. Huh? Then what is it? Is it then Total energy. Yes, movement of energy. Movement of energy. It's not movement of reaction. Well, it's not movement of things reacting to each other. To, yeah. as the world can be regarded as made up of a large number of things which react to each other. Yes. And that's one kind of movement. But we're saying that it's a different kind of movement. It's entirely different. Which has no thing in it. No thing in it, and therefore not of time. Mm. Right? Is that possible? Or are we just indulging in imagination? Right. Right. Indulging in some kind of romantic, uh, hopeful, uh, pleasurable uh, sensation. I don't think we are. Mm -hmm. Because we've been through all that, step by step by step, right up to this point. So we are not deceiving ourselves. Now we say that emptiness has no centre, right? Mm -hmm. As the me, and all the reactions so on. It is in that emptiness there is a movement of timeless energy. Yes, well, when you say timeless <laughs> energy, now the, uh, because uh, we, we could go over and say that we've said already that thought and time are the same. That yes, yes, of course. And uh, the, uh, uh, then you're saying that time can only come into a material process, right? Time can only come in material process, that's right. And now, if we have an energy that's uh, timeless but ne nevertheless moving... Yes. It's we, not static, I guess. Yes, it's flowing, it's moving. Right? It's moving. Yes, now what is the movement, you think? So, what is movement? From here to there. Well, that's one form. That's one form. Or from yesterday to today. Yeah. And from today to tomorrow. And that's, uh, yes. And, and Another all, movement. Yes, and there's various kinds of movement like yeah. that. And so, what is movement? Is there a movement? I'm just I'm asking, I want mm -hmm. to question it. Is there a movement which is not movement? Well, just 
Yeah. You understand? Is there a movement? which has no beginning and no end. Because thought has a beginning and an end. Well, except, you see, we could say that the movement of matter might have no beginning and no end, end. the reactive movement. Yeah. We're, we're not talking about no, that either. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. But you see, the, so it's not enough to say it has no beginning and no end, right? We must go back then to the other. That is, thought has a beginning, mm-hmm. and thought has an ending. There is a movement of matter as reaction and the ending of that reaction. Yes, in, in the brain. Right? In the brain. That there are these various kinds of movements. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all we know. And you, someone comes along and says, there is a totally different kind of movement. But to understand that, I must be free of the movement of thought, material, and all that, Mm -hmm. movement of time. To understand a movement that is not... Well, not only... See, there are two things. It has no beginning and no end, but also it is not determined as a series of successions from the past. Yes, yeah. no causation. It's not a series of causes, one yeah, following another. Yeah, of course, of course. No causation. But, see, matter can be looked at as a series of causes, though it may not be adequate. But Yeah, yeah, I understand. But now we're saying uh, this movement has no beginning and no end, and it is not the result of a series of causes, one following another, without no, end, no, right? No. So, sir, I want to... Okay, I want to understand, verbally even, mm-hmm. a movement that is not mo- a movement. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm making... Then why, why is it called a movement if it is not a movement? Right? Because it's not still. Yes. It's not... It's active. It's Active, dynamic. Yeah. It's, yes, it's energy. Yeah. It is tremendous. Therefore, it can never be still. But it has got in that energy a stillness. I don't yes. Right. I, 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 yes. It, the energy itself is. I think that we have to say that the ordinary language cannot uh, does not um, um, portray convey, this properly. It convey no, it properly, no. but. The energy itself is uh, is still and also moving, is what you're saying. Yes, that, uh, but in that movement, it is a movement of stillness. The movement of stillness, <laughs> right. Does what it you say, sound crazy? The movement can be said to emerge from stillness, stillness. and fall That's back right. into stillness. Still right. Right. That's right. See, that's what it is, so that is... We said this mind, this emptiness is in the mind. That emptiness is, has no cause and no effect. It is not a movement of causation. No, no, yes. It is not movement of thought, time. It is not a movement yeah. of material uh, reactions. Hmm? None of that. Which means is the mind capable of that extraordinary stillness without any movement? And when there is so completely still, there is a, there is a movement out of it. Yes. It sounds crazy. Well, it needn't sound crazy. I mean, in fact, uh, I think I mentioned before that people have even, some people have had this notion in the huh? past, I, uh, such as Aristotle, we discussed in. Uh, oh, I didn't know. He talked I... about the unmoved mover. That, that is the way he picked, he tried to describe God, do you see? Ah, God, no. I'm not describing We don't want God. to describe God. But I mean, <laughs> but some sort of notion similar to this has been held in the past by various people. Uh, but since then, it has not has gone out of fashion. I think. I think out of fashion. Let's uh, bring it into fashion, shall we? <laughs> uh, 
I'm not saying that Aristotle had the right idea. It was merely that he was considering something somewhat similar, but a, probably different in many yes, ways. Yes, but it was, was it an intellectual concept or an actuality? This is very hard to tell because so little is... Uh, therefore, we don't have to bring in Aristotle. Well, I merely wanted to say that, uh, to point out that it wasn't crazy because at least other oh, very I'm, respectable I, people have I'm considered glad. it. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm glad to be assured I'm not crazy. <laughs> Because you did ask if it was crazy. You see. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And is that movement out of stillness? Is that the movement of, of creation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not the creation which the artists and the poets and the writers and all painters call creation. I, I, to me, that's not creation. That's just a capacity and skill and memory and knowledge operating there. Here, I think this is this creation is not expressed in form. But yes, well, that's important because usually we think creation is expressed as form or as structure. Structure, yes. Uh, and now this, this, well, then, then this is difficult. Uh, see, what does it mean, right? We are, we have gone beyond being crazy, so we can. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say, sir, this movement, not being of time, is eternally new? Yeah. Huh? Yes, it's eternally new, uh, in the sense that the creation is eternally new, the right? Creation is eternally new. Right. See, I think that's what the artists are trying to find out. Well, yes, that's true, yeah. Therefore, they indulge in all kinds of various absurdities. Hmm? Well, but to come to that point when the mind is absolutely silent, absolutely again, well, yes, uh, completely silent, out of that silence there is this movement which is it, always new, eternally new. Uh -huh. And the moment when that Movement is expressed. Yes, well, the first expression is in thought, right? That, I am not just it. And uh, that may be useful, but, uh, but then it gets fixed, right? Yeah. Then it may become a barrier. I was told, you see, once by an Indian philosopher, Indian s s scholar, that before they began to sculpture a head or of a god or whatever it is, they had to have deep meditation, go into deep meditation. And when at the right moment they mm -hmm. took up the <laughs> yeah, well, hammer and the yeah, chisel. To have it come out of the emptiness. Empty. Right? Well, there's another point. You see, the Australian Aborigines draw figures in the sand. and <laughs> yes, So yes. they don't, not permanent, right? Yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, let's see if our thought could be looked at that way. You see, the marble is already too static. Static. It of stays there for thousands of years. And <laughs> so, although the original sculptor may have uh, understood, the people who follow see it as a fixed form. You see. That. So what? Next thing is, what relationship has all that to my daily life? What way does that act through, through my action, through my ordinary physical responses? I have 
there are no psychological responses. Mm -hmm. Because I, but there are physical responses. Yeah. To noise, to pain, to uh, various forms of disturbance, physical disturbances. What relationship has the physical to that silent movement? I don't. Yes, well, insofar as the mind is silent, then the thought is orderly. Right? Yes, but it is orderly. Mm -hmm. ah, we're getting on to something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you say that silent movement, with its unending newness, is total order of the universe? Well, yes, we could consider that. that huh? Yes, we could consider that the, uh, the order of the universe emerges from this yes, silence sir. and emptiness. Right? Yes. So, created, so right? what is I want, what's my relationship? What is the relationship of this mind to the universe? The particular mind. You mean? No, mind. I'm talking. Mind in general. Ge no, mind. The general and the particular we went yeah. through, and beyond that, there is the mind. Well, that's would you say that's universal? Then? That's the universal mind. Yes. That. Universal mind, I don't like to use the word universal. But I mean, it's uh, in the sense uh, that, that that which is beyond the particular in general <coughs> would usually be called yeah. universal. Yes. But it may be that it, the word is difficult. Can uh, you find a different word? Global? No. No, well. A mind that is beyond a particular. No. Well, mind. you could say it's the source, it's the. Uh, Huh? It's the it's the source, you know, the um, the essence. I don't know what you could say, but uh, it has been called the absolute. And I don't want to use that word absolute no, either. No, but in the sense of being, and the absolute literally means that which is free of all limitation, of all uh, you know, of all dependence, right? Yes. All right. We we agree that absolute means. Free from all dependence, from all uh, limitation. Yes, from all relationship. Then. Yeah. Then we use that. All right. Well, I mean, the it absolute... has unfortunate connotations. Right? Of course, of course. Let's use that word for con for the moment, can be for our convenience in our dialogue. <clears throat> there is this absolute stillness, and that. In that stillness, or from that stillness, there is a movement, and that movement is everlastingly new. And is that mind? What is the what is the relationship of that mind to the to the universe? To the universe of matter. Yes, universe. The whole universe. Whole universe. Yeah. Matter, trees, yes, nature. people. Man, yeah. the heavens. Yes, well, that's an interesting question, you see. That? Yeah. Now, that is in order. The mm -hmm. universe is in order. Yes. Whether it's destructive or constructive, it's still order. Well, it's necessary order. You see, the order has the character of being, of being absolutely necessary, in the sense it cannot be otherwise. It is. Quite, quite. Uh, it has no. The order that we usually know is not absolutely necessary. It could be changed. You see, it could depend on something else. Right? Uh, any ordinary order is contingent, as I say. It depends on something. No, the eruption of a volcano yeah. is order. It's order of the whole universe. Of it's, course. it's necessary, considering the whole universe, it cannot be otherwise. Otherwise, quite. Now, in the universe, there is order. Mm -hmm. and this mind, which is, which is still, which from which is, is completely in order. That's the, the, the deep mind, the absolute. Yeah, the absolute mind. So the, then, is this mind the universe? Well, that's a question. Right? Yeah, in what a, sense is that the universe? Huh? And we have to understand in what sense, in what, how it, what it means to say that, you see.
Or it means, uh, is there a division, a barrier, or division between this absolute mind and the and the and the universe? Yes. Or both are the same. Both are the same, right? That's what I want we to want say. We want to say that uh, that that is uh, we have either duality of mind and matter. Matter. That's it. Or they are both both the same. same right? Is that presumptuous? Well, not necessarily, no. I mean, uh, these are just two possibilities. I mean... I, I want to be quite sure we are not uh, treading upon something which is really needs a, a very, very, very subtle, great care. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yes. Well, if we go back to the body, you know, and say, We've said the body is physical; it's material. Yes. And we said the mind of the body, the mind of the, uh, which is in the body, which is thought, general feeling, desire, general, all thought, feeling, desire, will, the general, and the particular, Absolute. are mater a part of the material process. Material process. They are not different from the body, right? That's right. They are all the reactions are material yeah. process. process. And therefore, what we usually call the mind is not different from what we usually call the body. Right. Quite. Quite. Now you're making this much greater and saying, consider the whole universe. The whole universe. And we say what we call the mind in that universe is a different from what we call the universe you know, itself that's in right. matter. That's right. You see, that's why I feel in our daily life there must be order. Mm. Not the order of thought. Well, thought is a limited order. It's yeah, dependent, that's it, that's relative, right? Yeah. It, so, uh, I have to have an order that is... Well, it's free of limitation. It's free of limitation, yeah. yeah. In my daily life I have to have that, which means no conflict whatsoever. No contradiction, no... Uh, yes. All the rest of that. Well, if we take the order of thought, you see, when it's rational, it's in order. Now, in contradiction, the order of thought has broken down. Broken up, it has reached quite. its limit, right? Yeah. That thought works until it reaches a contradiction, and that's the limit. So, if in my daily life hmm. there is complete order in which there is no disturbance, mm -hmm. what is the relationship of that order to the to the never-ending order. Yes. Can that silent movement of order, of that extraordinary something, can that affect my daily life when I have deep inward psychological order? Mm -hmm. You understand? Me? Yeah. Yes, well, we've said, for example, the volcano is a manifestation of the whole order. Of the universe, you know. Absolutely. Tiger the, killing so, the, so it, then the question is whether uh, the human being in his daily life can be similar. Similar, that's it. If not, I don't see what's the point of the other. Mm -hmm. Well, it has no point to the human being. Right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> then you would fall back into the human being trying to make his own purpose out of himself, you know, out yes. of his thoughts, right? Yeah. See, I think some people would say, oh, who cares about the universe? All we care about is our own uh, society, what we're doing, right? But then that falls down because it's full of, of contradictions. obviously, it's only thoughtless. It's too seen. small, yeah. So, the, that universe, which is in total order, does affect my daily life. Yes, uh, I think you know. Some let's suppose people or say scientists might ask how you see that. See, people might say, "Okay, I understand that the universe is constituted of matter. The laws of matter affect your daily life." But uh, we're saying it is not so clear how it affects the mind. You know how the mind is, that there is this uh, uh, absolute mind which affects the daily life. Uh, what is my daily life? A series of reactions and disorders, right? Mm -hmm. 
I'm making it very quick, brief. That is that. Well, it's mostly that thing. Uh, mostly. And there's always, thought is always struggling to bring order within that. Yes. And when it does that, it's still disorder. Because thought is limited. Yeah, of course. It's I mean, always no. limited by its own contradiction. Contradiction, of course. Hmm. So it is always, thought is always creating disorder. Mm -hmm. Because it's itself limited. And as soon as it tries to go beyond the limit, that is disorder. Right? That is disorder, right. <laughs> I've understood, I've gone into it, I have, I have an insight into it, so I have a certain kind of order in my life. But that order is still limited. Yeah. I recognize that. And as long as matter, living this existence, I say it's limited. Yes, now some people will accept that and say that, why should you have more? You say, ah, well, let's I'm not having slow. more. But I mean, let's see carefully, you see that uh, some people would say, I would be happy if we could bring this limited order, <laughs> uh, saying <laughs> we have so much disorder now, if we could live in the ordinary material life with real order, I said, let's do it. Let's do it, man. Of course that must be done. Yes. But in the very doing of it, do, one has to realize it's limited. Yes. Yes, even the highest order you can produce is limited. Limited. Right. And the mind realizes its limitation and says, look, let's go beyond it. Yes, well, why, let's go. So why, you see, that? See, some people would say, why not be happy within those limits, continually extending them? You know, saying we can discover new uh, thoughts, you know, new uh, orders. Yes. Uh, the artist will discover new forms of art, the scientists, new kinds of science. See, some people... But it is always limited. Yes, but well, we have to go slowly, you see, because I think some people would carry, go this far and then say, we are, that it, that's all that is possible, you see. Yes. I like the uh, human condition, let's accept it. And do and the, make best the best we can it. within it. They say we could do much better than we're doing. Yeah. Yes, yes. But it's still the, con the human condition. Yes. Little reformed, little better. Well, some so. people would say enormously reformed, you see. <laughs> yes, yes. But it's still limited. Yes. Well, let's try to make it clear because what is wrong with the limitation, you think? It's in that limitation, there is no freedom. There's a limited freedom. Yes, we say eventually we come to the boundary of our freedom, that yeah. something, uh, let's try to put it clearly, something not known to us makes us react, and we will become, this will therefore inevitably fail, because through reaction we will fall back into contradiction. Yes, but when I see, sir, yeah. that I'm always moving within a certain area, Yeah. Huh? And that, that era, then, therefore, I'm under the control of uh, the forces. Forces and the limiting. Yeah. Uh, the, the mind inevitably rebels against that. Well, the mind, that's an important point. We see that the mind wants freedom, right? Oh, obviously. Yes, it says that's the highest value, right? Uh, but, so do we accept that as saying that's just a fact, right? Yes. Uh, that is, I mean, a prisoner, mm -hmm. I realize I'm a prisoner within this limitation. Yes, yeah, some people get used to it and say, I accept the limitation. I accept the limitation. I, the best, I huh? won't accept it. Right. I, my mind says, uh, there must be freedom mm -hmm. from prison. I am a prisoner, and the prison is very nice, but very cultured, very all the rest of it, but it's still limited, and it says, uh, there must be freedom beyond all this. Yes, now which mind says this? Is it the particular mind of the human being? or? Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. Who says there must be freedom? Oh, that's very simple. The very pain, the very suffering, the very all that, demands that we go beyond. Yeah, so you're saying that this particular mind, even though it accepts limitation, finds it painful. Painful. It may cover of course, up the pain. How could that and therefore, it, this particular mind feels somehow that it's not right. That, yes. It, no, it can't avoid it. Right? There seems to be a necessity of freedom, if you want freedom. to put it that way. Freedom is necessary. It's necessary, yeah. I mean, any 
any hindrance to freedom is retrogression. Yeah. Right. And that necessity is not an external necessity due to reaction. No, that freedom is not a reaction. Yeah, the necessity no. of freedom is not a reaction. No, so no. Some people would say that having been in prison, you react against it. Oh, no, no, it. no. No. <laughs> so where are we? She said, that means I, there must be freedom from reaction, freedom from the limitation of thought, freedom from all the movement of time. You know, all mm -hmm. that, there must be complete freedom from all that. Before I really understand the empty mind and all that, and order of the universe, which is then the order of the mind. Yes. And you are asking me a tremendous lot. Am I willing to go that far? Well, the, you know, the non-freedom has its attraction, you see. Of the, course, of course. I'm not, I'm not interested in that attraction. <laughs> but, when you ask the question, am I willing to go that far, I see it seems to suggest that uh, there may be some, in the non-freedom there is something attractive of course that holds I mean, you, right? I'm, I'm sure of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I've found safety, security, pleasure in <clears throat> non-freedom. I realize in that pleasure, pain, there is no freedom, and the mind says, out not of, as a reaction, says that there must be freedom from all this. Yes, there are yeah. To come to that point mm -hmm. and to let go <laughs> mm. without conflict demands its own discipline, its own insight. That's why I said those of us who have given certain amount of time, thought, and investigation into all this, can, can one go as far as that? Or there's the responses of the body, response of daily demand, the responsibilities of daily action, wife, children, and all that. Is that what is holding me back, holding and preventing this sense of complete freedom? And the monks, the, the saints and the sannyasis have said, you must abandon the world. Yes. Well, <clears throat> we've gone into that, that yeah, they bring the world that. with them anyway. So. <laughs> no, uh, That's again another form of idiocy. Sorry to put it uh -huh. like that. No, I, I, we've been through all that, so I, I refuse to enter again into all that. Now I say, is that universe and the mind that is, has emptied itself of all this, are they one? Are they one? One. They are not separate. They are one. Yes, well, are you more or less... See, it sounds as if you are saying that the uh, material universe is like the body of, a, of an absolute mind. Yes, all right, all right, <laughs> all right. It's maybe a picturesque way yes, of putting yes, it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh. We must be very careful also not to fall into the trap that the universal mind is always there. Yes, well, how would you put it, then? I mean, they have said that. God is always there, and God, we, you, Brahman, or mm -hmm. highest principle, is always there, and all that you have to do is, is to cleanse yourself and arrive at that. Do all kinds of things to come there. Which is also very dangerous statement, because you then say, there is the eternal in me. Mm -hmm. hmm? yeah, well, I think thought is projecting the Of course, eternal, that's but, of course, of course. But suppose, how would you put it to say that, that uh, 
Uh, see, there's a, a logical difficulty in saying it's always there because it always implies time. And time. Yeah, it's there every minute is what you mean, and we're trying to discuss what has nothing to do with time. <laughs> nothing to do with time. Uh, so you can't place it as being here or there and now or then, right? So we come to a point, sir, that there is this universal mind and the human mind can be of that when when there is sir so when there is freedom. Yes. What's the question of isn't it? Yes, what time are you? All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going by time, all right. Yeah. Well that should be enough. That should be enough. Right. We'll continue when. You want to go next week and, and Saturday? We'll see. <laughs>